my three guests today, three distinct individuals who deal with various areas of what you could call psychic areas. And they are Joey Cronita, who is a medium. Then we have Evelyn Crawford, who is a tarot card reader. And Jocelyn Savard, who is a palmist and an astrologer. Now, Jocelyn, here you are. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and you, here you are as a lady who is um, somebody who can read the palm. Right. Now, what well, is, uh, I mean, you know, how do you do that? Well, I, I don't only read the palms. What I really do is I'm a human morphology in the sense that all my life, since I'm a baby, starting by predicting my own brother's death you know, within the three days of uh, time, it's like I like to analyze people in the energy matter, like past, present, and future, and try to give the people the reason, first of all, why do they exist? What are they doing on the planet? Try to make them relate what, to what the, the world that they don't know and the world from here, and work in the dimensions of emotions or the mental and different areas of their lives. That's what I try to do. So usually, by looking at them, I get a feeling. Plus, I take the uh, position of the planet, and most of all, by taking handprints, you got the whole life here. You got two poles. You got all the elements controlling the life. You could diagnose absolutely everything from past, present, and future. And I try not to uh, take astrology and palmistry as a thing, as a fact that is done, but understanding what kind of energy from up there, okay? What kind of games they're trying to play with us? Because I what believe. Do you mean? What? Who's trying to play games with us? <laughs> there's energy <laughs> in the cosmos. Like there's two, two, two forces of energy. You always have, if you really listen, listen carefully, two, two forces. One says what? Well, why don't you go tonight and see that person? Anyone says, ha, ah, stay in bed. Anyone says, you shouldn't go out with this guy. Anyone says, yes, you should. He's gorgeous. And actually, you're debating all your life from two polarities. And that, what I'm trying to do, me, is to try to fuse you in the middle that you can understand where you're standing and what is your best investment for your personal survival. But you don't believe, do you, that an individual's life is written in stone? I believe you have seven seeds. You have... Uh, earned a certain level of evolution of a certain kind of energy therefore it puts you in a certain area but i believe you could make a choice and you could do something about it and the way i work i try to give back the willpower of people that they should listen to themselves and listen to and see how the energies go and put them a, as a guide a, a, about their life and that they could do for what is best for them well okay. after we take this break we're going to come back right. and we're going to see how that energy works out for a number of lucky people in the audience the be right back of, um Somebody who can read the palm. Right. Now, well, what I mean, you know, how do you do that? Well, I, I don't only read the palms. What I really do is I'm a human morphology in the sense that all my life, since I'm a baby, starting by predicting my own brother's death in the, within the three days of uh, time, it's like I like to analyze people in the energy matter, like past, present, and future, and try to give the people the reason, first of all, why do they, they exist? What are they doing on the planet? Try to make them relate what, what the, the world that they don't know and the world from here and work in the dimensions of emotions or the mental and different areas of their lives. That's what I try to do. So usually by looking at them, I get a feeling. Plus, I take the uh, position of the planet. And most of all, by taking handprints, you got the whole life here. You got two poles. You got all the elements controlling the life. You could diagnose absolutely everything from past, present, and future. And I try not to take astrology and palmistry as a thing, as a fact that is done, but understanding what kind of energy from up there, okay, what kind of games they're trying to play with us, because I what believe... Do you mean, what, who's trying to play games with us? <laughs> there's energy <laughs> in the cosmos, like there's two, two, two forces of energy. You always have, if you really listen, listen carefully, two, two forces. One says, well, why don't you go tonight and see that person? The other one says, ha, ah, stay in bed. The other one says, you shouldn't go out with this guy. The other one says, yes, you should, he's gorgeous. And actually, you're debating all your life from two polarities. And that's what I'm trying to do, me, is to try to fuse you in the middle that you can understand where you're standing and what is your best investment for your personal survival. But you don't believe, do you, that an individual's life is written in stone? I believe you have seven seeds. You have uh, earned a certain level of evolution of a certain kind of energy. Therefore, it puts you in a certain area. But I believe you could make a choice and you could do something about it. And the way I work, I try to give back the willpower of people that they should listen to themselves and listen to and see how the energies go and put them a, as a guide 
uh, about their life and that they could do for what is best for them. Well, okay. after we take this break, we're going to come back right. and we're going to see how that energy works out for a number of lucky people in the audience. Yes, ma'am. Well, we are dealing here with a powerful uh, personality with a mixture of fire and some mixture of air sign because of her blue eyes, but the, the basic personality has to be a fire sign. And a little bit of earth, but mostly the most important thing is the emotional. So in the priory, when she was born, the fire was very strong. The energy has to go very, very, very much. But the emotion sort of came in. So the personality, uh, even when, when she was born, there must be an incredible difference between the mother and the father. There's like two dualities when she was born. And she had to sort of get back to herself very, very soon, young in life. And she had to fight to be on her own. So that she didn't have what you call the real support. To that, that, you know, some people have an easy life until 14, 15, 16. Well, her, very, very little, she did it on her own, and she's just pu pushing very, very hard. How do you tell that from the handle? Because the two hands, the destiny line comes from here, right? You see? And it's on its own. And she has some kind of a thing about her that likes show business, that likes entertaining, that likes singing, that likes music, must be a key, a key also, and it's something that she likes. One of her Is that best. true? Like yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. No, but there's something about you when you go and see a show, you must be very, very, like you feel like you could almost do it. And it's something you dream about that in a strong, strong matter. Because in the past life, there was a contact and a relationship with that was before that. Which means in, the, in this lifetime, because of the, uh, the father seems to be more practical and the mother seems to be more, the more unsure per the person, more soft and more sort of letting go in your personality. But neither one really affected you in a way of you, you've worked out your emotions. You're very, very strong. You could be psychic too at moments. You could feel things on the spur. Okay, when it happens, it happens very, very fast. Your love life started off not later. You, you could have been in love a lot, but you were sort of a very, very independent, and you sort of really start loving and falling in love more, I would say around 25, 26, 27 years old, where, more, where, where it starts really getting to where, attracting more positive partners towards you. But you're still working on that. You have well, not I, yet, yet. I think at that kind of scintillating point, with the lady working on more partners, we've got to take this pause, move on, move on to another section of the show, okay. and when we take the break later on, you can okay. get back and fill her in to those key things that she Absolutely. may be missing. Oh, okay. thanks, Jocelyn. Lots what, of what's the there. difference there? Because there are a lot of people, especially West Indians, who believe in, in voodoo. What, what is that? Voodoo is really dealing what you call the negative pole of our universe, which we are trying to get out of, okay? That means you are dealing with very powerful spirits that's been hanging around there, try to confuse us about our lives. So when you deal with there, you could make a deal. Let's say like those dolls. They could put something and make some kind of a magic, and they have a, a deal that they, they could make this person sick or die, you whatever. Believe, you believe that works? It does work. I saw it myself. That's a fact. How does it work? In, Br in Brazil and everywhere I was there, they make a, they make they put a spell on somebody and through spirit and the will of the dead they make it happen and that's it except that the people who, who from all the, the studies i've made and the personal experience i have noticed that people who have been working with these kind of forces all had incredible problems in their own personal lives okay so i wouldn't advise that you play with that at all because when you make a shortcut in the universe you have to balance okay so it's not it's not a good thing at all it's very 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 dangerous it could kill people destroy people give disease to people, and if you could have a thing on 10 years or, or 20 years, like a spell on you, so it's probably one of the most dangerous, wouldn't you say so, it dangerous works, thing in the... But it works on fear. If you give it, 